It's Wednesday, March 26, 2025, and I've got an update for you on our several different areas of severe weather that we're watching, including one up there in the Pacific Northwest today. You can see this big ridge that's forming, and that's leading to some record warmth, and later today, it's going to lead to some big-time storms in Oregon and Washington. A very rare slight risk of severe weather has been issued for Portland, Seattle, Tacoma, all the way down to Eugene and Salem. This is driven mostly by the risk for large large damaging hail. I would not be surprised to see golf ball size hail today somewhere in Oregon or Washington. Uh, I also wouldn't be surprised if we got a couple of reports of larger hail, maybe tennis ball sized hail, which is just absolutely crazy for this part of the world in this time of year. And believe it or not, there is going to be a substantial threat for tornadoes today for a brief period of time right around the initiation of some of these supercell thunderstorms in Washington and Oregon that we've got a very rare 5% tornado risk today. So we've got this powerful 100 knot jet streak that's going to be responsible for bringing about some much warmer temperatures, some even nicer weather over here into the Pacific Northwest today. Uh, And that's also going to be transporting moisture and uh, providing wind shear that will allow for some supercell storms to form today between 2 and 5 p.m. local time. It looks to me like they're mostly going to be popping up in Oregon. And then as they go into Washington, that's when they're going to really start growing up scale and becoming more multicellular and linear in nature. So personally, I think the best shot of seeing large hail and uh, tornadoes is going to be in Oregon, but the best shot of seeing widespread damaging winds is likely going to be in Washington. And these storms are going to impact large population centers. About 7.2 million people are under the gun today for severe weather. And I want everybody to know that even if you don't get hit by a supercell thunderstorm, just the gradient winds from this overall large low pressure center is going to cause problems. We're going to have widespread power outages due to the strong damaging winds that will be happening here even after these storms are done and as we go into the day tomorrow where we're just going to have more of a uh, strong wind and heavy rain threat not necessarily a supercellular threat. So this is going to be a long duration storm where the precipitation will be on and off but the winds are just going to continue to come through and cause problems through the day tomorrow. But specifically the supercell thunderstorm storms that are going to pop up this afternoon are, you know, notably strong. I think that uh, if you live out here, you probably haven't seen anything like this for a while. So make sure you get those vehicles protected from large hail. Make sure you are away from windows. If you live near uh, a tree, you you know, that could fall. This is a a pretty susceptible area to that kind of thing. Just know that the severe storms are going to be coming through tonight and we might go live for it. We're not completely there yet, but we'll be standing by. And if we get tornado warnings and uh, if it looks like uh, our analysis would be useful, we will definitely turn on a live stream. And while the Pacific Northwest is dealing with severe thunderstorms today, an even more dangerous and longer duration weather event is going to start building up down here in South Texas. Notice these storms that will be popping up later today into tomorrow. They're going to be packing their own large hail and isolated damaging wind threats. Not much of a tornado threat down here, but notice how the storms don't move much, right? And they're just kind of hovering over South Texas right next to the Gulf with ample moisture. This is going to lead to training thunderstorms where supercell thunderstorms or multicellular thunderstorms will have the ability to go over the same populated areas over and over again and that of course is going to lead to flash flooding. Over the next 48 hours some places could see up to 12 inches of rain and more than half of that could fall in 6 to 12 hours so we're talking about 3 inch per hour rainfall rates which is unprecedented, even for this part of the world. So that's going to lead to a very life-threatening flash flooding threat down here in South Texas. I want everybody to understand the severity of what's going on here. Corpus Christi, Laredo, Missouri City, and Victoria are all in the path here, are all under the gun for potentially life-threatening flash flooding. So make sure you know what you're going to do when that flash flood warning comes through and you have the ability to get to higher ground. Make sure you have some reliable way of getting warnings for the next couple of days. Weather Prediction Center does already have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall today, and that actually goes up uh, as a slight risk to include Houston tomorrow, so the rain's going to be sticking around down here for a while. And like I said earlier, this is going to come with its own severe weather threat. It's not just the heavy rain that we're worried about. We also have some chances for some large hail and damaging winds, especially tomorrow, and that's why we have a slight risk of severe weather for Thursday, March 27th. That includes Victoria once again, Corpus Christi, Laredo, all the way back up towards Del Rio. And speaking of severe weather, let's talk about the big one. This is the one that everybody wants to hear about, and this is the one that's about to get 
much more popular on social media. You're going to start hearing people hooting and hollering about a tornado outbreak and all that kind of stuff. Just remember, don't be scared. Be prepared. We're still too far out to know the fine details, but we're starting to hone in on an area of interest here, and it does look like we're going to have a significant severe weather outbreak. It's hard to tell if it's going to be a tornado outbreak or mostly a hail concern or a damaging wind threat, but it does look like this is going to be a very active day of severe weather here across the southern and central portions of the United States. And once again, it's all being driven uh, due to this big ridge that's causing the severe weather today in the uh, Pacific Northwest. That's going to allow for ample moisture return into the central plains. It's going to allow for lots of heat and instability to build up. And then this mostly subtle little, you know, lifting area of the jet stream here over the central United States is going to allow for some very subtle forcing. And that's going to combine with some really deep moisture. I mean, just look at these dew point values as we go into the day on Saturday. On Saturday alone, we're going to have a really widespread and open uh, warm sector here from the Central Plains all the way over into the Ohio Valley. But uh, the cold front doesn't come through yet, so the moisture keeps cooking. It keeps building all the way into the day on Sunday, where we are going to have a little bit more forcing uh, that's going to allow for some storms to form. And you know what? It does look like right now that there could be a supercellular tornado threat right at the beginning here because we're going to have such a, a wide wide open and deep moisture layer and there's not going to be this uh, cold front that's going to sweep everything out until after the storms form. And we are going to have a, a widespread area of low level jet winds that are going to increase as we go into the overnight period. So this is going to be a pretty typical situation where the storms will fire around, you know, 4, 5, 6 p.m. or so and they're going to have the ability to produce tornadoes, damaging winds and hail, but it looks like they're going to have an increased ability to do that after 10 or 11 p.m. or so. So if we do have tornadoes, it's going to be a nocturnal tornado problem, and that makes this even more dangerous. Notice how the European model does show, you know, kind of multicellular or even supercellular convection late in the day on Sunday. And then as we go, you know, into the overnight period, something that might help us, even though the uh, wind shear will be increasing, there's a good chance that we're going to see this kind of form into a more linear line of storms. So if that happens, that might decrease the tornado risk a little bit, but it, this is so far out, it's honestly kind of pointless to even talk about the fine details like that until we get closer. But notice how the severe weather threat does extend over onto the southeast coast as we go into Monday. And that's why we've got 45 million people under another slight risk on Monday, March 31st, 2025. So yeah, this goes from uh, New Orleans all the way up to Virginia Beach. And uh, this is likely going to be another big severe weather day where we're still uncertain about the exact impacts, but this is probably going to be more of a damaging wind and hail kind of day. But as we get closer, if we see any tornadic details you will be the first ones to let you know so yeah there's a pretty good chance we're going to go live sunday and monday so make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a notification for one of those days i hope that we don't have to go live for either i hope that these are busted forecasts but right now it's looking like pretty impactful severe weather through march 31st and once again even if you don't get hit by severe weather something that everybody's going to feel from this storm system is the major temperature swing that's going to come about we're going to have record high temperatures today in the pacific north West. We're going to be up near 100 degrees in the desert southwest. This is unheard of for March. This is going to break a lot of records, and that's going to set the stage for the severe weather today, and it's going to set the stage for our severe weather as we go into the future. Look at this. Some places will be up near 40 degrees above average on Friday. It is going to feel like the craziest March 28th you've ever felt here in South Dakota, Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota on Friday and Saturday, and then that warm air kind of uh, compiles and, and compresses over here in the southeast as the cold front does eventually come through bringing about our severe weather and then notice how the west is going to get you know cooler much cooler actually and that uh, warm air is going to kind of stagnate in the east setting the stage for a continued period of unsettled weather i believe as we go into april we're going to see lots of uh, severe weather i think climate prediction center shows the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook continuing to look like this where we have above average temperatures uh, lots of heat building in the southeast and below average temperatures in the, the West. And that's kind of the opposite of what we've been dealing with over the past little bit. So this is going to uh, lead to a big pattern change, a big temperature flip. And it's also going to lead to more severe weather, I think, in the central and southeastern United States. One thing it's not going to do is bring any relief to the drought over here in uh, southern Colorado, southwest Kansas, the panhandles of Texas and Oklahoma into portions of New Mexico, even though a good portion of Texas is going to get a bunch of rain out of this upcoming system. 
them the parts that need it the most where we are going to continue to have a wildfire risk over the next several days are not going to get even a drop of rain so keep an eye out on the wildfire situation over there and the ever increasing drought because there's no relief in sight at least not for the next seven days uh, with rainfall over here look it literally might not rain a single drop in the entire state of Arizona through the next seven days. So keep that in mind while the rest of us are dealing with some sort of uh, precipitation in the form of severe weather, snow, or flooding rains. And then of course, I wanna make sure that we talk about the storm up here in the Northwest, like the tornadoes and the hail, that's gonna get all the attention, but this is gonna be you know, a pretty impactful overall atmospheric river type situation for even Northern California, where uh, the higher elevations are gonna see a ton of snow. There's gonna be a flood threat, even in the valleys, as we are gonna see a ton of rain out of this. And the general gradient winds outside of thunderstorms are going to cause widespread problems and cause power outages throughout the Pacific Northwest and probably even into the Intermountain West just as a result of the powerful winds that are going to be happening outside of thunderstorms. So keep that in mind as we go forward. So yeah, I'm going to be honest, this video is kind of hard to organize my thoughts because there's so much going on. Uh, there, there's stuff that I didn't even talk about that we need to talk about and I'm going to save it for tomorrow. So yeah, things are really crazy, really active out there and uh, I hope you guys are staying safe and remember don't be scared be prepared and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel turn notifications on we're going to continue to have daily updates for you here and i think we'll go live sunday and monday so i'll see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>